So will a gasoline engine that's designed to run on regular gasoline work just fine on E85 or is it going to be a problem? I've had a lot of requests to test this and also I've had requests to test whether or not a vehicle that is designed for E85 is going to work better with it or if regular gasoline will actually produce just as much horsepower. So we're going to take a vehicle down to a local speed shop and we'll have it put up on a dyno and see how it performs. So let's get the testing underway and just see how E85 does in a gasoline engine. So the vehicle we'll be using for some of our testing is a 2003 Chevrolet Suburban. It's an E85 equipped vehicle, our flex fuel vehicle. So it's designed to run on ethanol. We'll see how it does. The engine's just about out of regular gasoline, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some E85. Thank you for shopping with us. We appreciate your business. Okay, 30 gallons of E85. I went and put E85 fuel in this jar and I'm going to add it to this tester in just a minute. Now this fuel is advertised as being E85, which according to the fuel station, this fuel contains between 51 and 83% ethanol, not 85% ethanol. I really didn't want to know how much ethanol content exists in this fuel, so I bought this test kit. The way this test kit works is, water is added to the water line on the tester, the rest of the bottle is then filled with the E85. After shaking this up for five minutes, the alcohol separates out from the gasoline since alcohol is hydrophilic, which means it's attracted to water. I'm going to go ahead and add the water and then add the fuel and we'll see how much ethanol content exists. I've added the water and I'm going to add the fuel and I'll shake it up and we'll watch it settle out. It's been nearly half an hour since the water and the ethanol were mixed together and as you can see the water ethanol line is very close to 85%. So I ran into a bit of a problem doing the dyno test and that is the Chevrolet Suburban would not reach the 5000 RPM threshold for the test to be completed in third gear. The engine just did not have enough power to get the RPM up that high so we had to do the test in second gear. What this means is that the horsepower and torque readings are going to be off a little bit but they're both going to be off equally, at least that's my understanding. So what we can do is compare the difference between the two with the understanding that both numbers are artificially high. So at around 3500, E85 produced 312 foot-pounds of torque compared to 304, a difference of 8. But the horsepower was 221 compared to 204, a difference of 17. And that was the biggest difference there was the extra 17 horsepower at 3500. However, at around 5000 RPM, it was only producing 297 on the horsepower compared to 292, only a difference of 5. And the difference in torque was only 329 compared to 337, difference of 8. All right, the fuel light is on. We're going to see what kind of fuel mileage we got running the E85. It's been four days since we filled up with fuel, so we're going to see what kind of fuel efficiency we're getting. This engine is not designed to run on E85, but we're going to see if it will actually run on E85. Now one thing we can anticipate is the engine is likely to run very lean because there's 30% less energy in E85 than there is in a gallon of gasoline. Now this carburetor is not adjustable, so if it runs really lean, we're going to have to drill out the main jet to get enough fuel into the engine so it'll run smoothly. It's no surprise this engine will not run on E85. It's just not getting enough fuel. So what we're gonna do is use an extra carburetor that I have on supply, and we're gonna drill out the main jet and see if it'll run. I'm about to remove the original carburetor. Unfortunately, it looks like this carburetor is already leaking fuel. This ethanol has already started causing damage to it.
I get a lot of great recommendations on how to improve the testing, and one recommendation that someone left me was to replace this original carburetor with a Tillerson mechanically injected fuel delivery system. So this is a much different setup than a standard carburetor, and I can actually adjust the fuel delivery rate by a little set screw instead of changing out the entire jet. So it makes it a lot easier. We'll see if we can get this to put out enough fuel to run on the ethanol E85 fuel. Well, I have to admit, testing E85 was a lot of fun, especially using that go-kart with that Tillerson mechanically injected fuel delivery system. It allowed me to really dial in the right air-fuel mixture, getting the most horsepower possible out of that engine without messing around with the timing. Also, regarding the Suburban, I was really disappointed with the fuel efficiency on E85, getting about 11.8 miles per gallon. Pretty bad fuel efficiency, especially since I'm used to getting close to 16 on mostly highway driving. So if I were to drive that vehicle on E85 for 100,000 miles, it'd cost me an extra $2,500, and I'd have to stop for fuel an extra 80 times. Regarding the positives with E85, it really it does a great job at keeping the combustion chamber clean. As we saw in that small engine, that engine was rather clean compared to regular 87 octane fuel. So ethanol is a very powerful solvent, so I don't recommend using it unless your vehicle is designed for it. But I would like to hear your comments on whether or not you've used E85 and the performance differences compared to pump gas, as well as fuel efficiency differences. Do you like E85 or do you think it's a problem? Also, I'm always interested in your future video ideas. I hope you'll give me some more ideas and I'll keep making videos. Thanks so much for watching and I look forward to next time.